Hello and welcome to another system design video and in this video we'll be looking at the difference between monolithic system architecture and microservices architecture. First let's look at the monolithic architecture. A monolithic architecture has a single logical executable, hence the mono. So if we have a standard enterprise web application where we have the client side, the server side application and the database, with a monolithic architecture, your server-side application will have multiple responsibilities, such as building your front-end UI resources, handle account services, and handle inventory plus some more. Now the benefits of a monolithic architecture. Since you're only building one application, it's simple to develop, especially in the beginning. Another advantage a single application brings is you can carry out end-to-end -end testing easily because all you need is to bring up this one application and all your components are up and running to test. And for the same reason, monolithic systems are simple to deploy as you only need to package up this one application and deploy it on a server. So generally, monolithic architectures bring simplicity in the development, testing and deployment processes at the beginning. The reason I keep stressing at the beginning will make more sense when we look at the downsides. So the drawbacks of monolithic architecture. As this one service starts to take on more and more responsibilities, your application starts to become too large and complex to fully understand by a single person. And because of this, development starts to become a pain, as it can become harder to understand exactly what a new change may or may not break. Now if we have multiple small teams working on the same monolithic application, it makes this problem even worse, especially if there is poor communication and coordination between the teams. Another drawback is continually deploying small features is difficult, as you have to redeploy the whole application for a small change in one module that only affects one part of the monolith, and the size of the application can mean it can take longer to start up. Monolith applications can also make your product less reliable as a small bug in a single module, such as a memory leak, could bring down the whole system. Monoliths are also more prone to using older technologies and become a legacy system. The reason for this is because changing to a new framework or language, because of various reasons, would require a rewrite of the entire application, and the size and complexity of the application makes it very expensive to switch to newer technologies halfway through. Now let's look at microservices. A microservices architecture has multiple logical executables. So if we go back to the enterprise web application example, now instead of one server side application which has multiple responsibilities, we have multiple services with single responsibilities for all the logic that can be decoupled. So you have a service to support your front-end UI, you have another service for handling accounts, and a separate service to handle your inventory. The benefits of a microservice architecture. Microservices tackles the problems you have when a monolithic application gets too big. Since microservices are small and generally only responsible for one thing, they have reduced complexity, making it much faster to develop as it's a lot easier to understand and maintain. You can now have small independent teams developing each service independently, which increases productivity, which also means the teams can now adopt continuous development practices even for complex systems. Unlike big monolithic applications, microservices reduces the barrier of adopting new technologies, as a rewrite of a small service is a lot less costly. This means developers are not bound to the choices made at the start of the project and can pick the best tool for the best job. Another advantage is microservices architecture enables each service to be scaled independently. So services that see more traffic can be scaled up whereas less popular services do not need scaling, unlike the monolith where you have no choice but to scale up everything. Now the drawbacks of microservice architecture. Microservice applications are a distributed system. So even though we reduce complexity on an individual service level, we add complexity in the communication between the services. You will have to consider other ways services communicate with each other, like using messaging queues, and you'll have to handle partial failure scenarios, where one service that has many other services depending on it fails to deliver. Unlike the monolith, testing becomes a more complex task with microservices. Instead of just spinning up one service, you now need to spin up all the dependent services for a full end-to-end -end test. Or if you just want to do an individual service level integration test, 
you will need to stub out all services the service under test depends on. Another drawback comes with development. We might have made development easier on an individual service level, but features that span multiple services become harder to integrate. You need to carefully coordinate the changes and deployments of the microservices. This brings us to the last downside, deployment. With microservices, there are a lot of moving parts, so deployment isn't as simple as the monolithic application. But this one can be simple to solve, as you can automate the deployment process by creating yourself a continuous integration pipeline to make deployment as easy as pressing a button. From my personal experience and reading a number of case studies, the best way to design your system is to start with a monolithic application, writing proper modular code when you build it. And then once the system starts to become too big, you can split out the modules into their own services and take advantage of the microservice architecture. So that's all for monolith versus microservices. As always, if the video helped, hit that like button and subscribe for more system design videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.